in the previous part we talked about some basic properties of particles of matter so now we will take up some important characteristic properties of the batter or we can say characteristics of particles of matter and we will try to understand these characteristics or properties with some more examples in detail first property is the particles of matter have space between them let us take the example of air water and some solid to see how the particles are in case of air the particles are very far from each other that means the space between the particles is more so this is air that we are talking about suppose we take water so in water also particles have space but the space is little less so say these are the particles of water they have space but it is comparatively less and then let us take the example of some solid in solids the particles are very close to each other that means the space between the particles is very very less characteristics okay so air water and solid this is how the particles are now to understand this let us take an example suppose some red colored or orange colored smoke is released from some place so you will find that the smoke easily spreads into the air the reason is the space between the air particles so the smoke will easily go through all these and you will find that the smoke is evenly distributed in the air this example we discussed in the earlier video also suppose you add sugar into water the level of water does not increase so where is that sugar going suppose you added 2 teaspoons of sugar into a glass of water where is that sugar going if the uh, the level is not increasing the sugar particles go here in between the liquid or water particles here the particles cannot move through the solid because there is no space here so the point is if the space between the particles is more then movement between the particles becomes easier gases have maximum spaces or the you can say particles of gas will have maximum space particles of liquid like water will have less space and particles of solid they do not have space this is one property the second property is the particles of matter they attract each other particles of matter attract each other now this attraction can be more or less it is very easy to understand this what we see or what is there around us is air so if we move our hand like this or if we move some pen or something like this it it is moving through the air the particles are away from each other and the space or the, sorry the attraction between them is less so when you move something the particles are far they are not very close they are not very attracted to each other so you can move something in between them in liquids the force of attraction of the particle is slightly more suppose there is a tap and you open the tap the water starts running down and you move your hand through that water current you can move your hand but the water current continues that means the force of attraction between the water water molecules is more and now let us take the example of a solid suppose this is that solid and you want to move your finger through it you cannot because the particles of solid have 
maximum attraction. So, unless and until you move them apart, you cannot move your hand through. That means maximum maximum attraction is between the particles of solid and minimum attraction will be between the particles of gases. Minimum attraction is between the particles of, of gas and liquids are going to be in between these two. So, there is attraction less than solid more than gas. Now, let us take the third property. The third property is that particles of matter are continuously moving. Particles of matter are continuously moving. And one thing which is again important for us to remember that any moving particle is said to have kinetic energy. There are two types of energies. Potential energy is the energy possessed by a non-moving particle. So, if something is lying here, it is also having energy, but that is called potential energy. But as soon as the particle starts moving, we say that the potential energy is getting converted into kinetic energy. How do we know that particles are constantly moving? How can we understand this point? Imagine a situation when you are sitting in a room which is not very brightly lit, normal tube lights and all or maybe no artificial light and the door is closed or the window is closed and there is a tiny hole or a crack in the door or window and from outside the sunlight comes through that crack or through that opening or hole. In that beam of the light, you find tiny dust particles moving. And even if you are not doing anything, even if the fan is not on, still those particles are continuously moving. That means the particles of matter are continuously moving. We will take some more examples to under understand this. This point was explained to us by a scientist, Robert Brown. And this continuously moving property of particles is known as Brownian motion or Brownian movement because it was given by Robert Brown. So, these particles are continuously moving. Now, let us take an example. Suppose we have uh, somebody cooking in the kitchen. And we are sitting in our room doing our studies. We can smell the food which is being cooked in some other room, which there can be, you know, two rooms between the kitchen and our room. So, somebody is cooking in the kitchen and we can smell that food while sitting in our room. So, how did those particles reach to us? Because they are moving, number one. And number two, because when we are cooking, we are providing heat. So, one example is you can smell, we can smell food which is being cooked. The food which is being cooked, we can smell it from a distance. The reason is when we are heating it, when we provide heat, that heat energy gets converted into kinetic energy. Heat energy is getting converted into kinetic energy and kinetic energy is the energy possessed by the moving particle. That means if you supply heat, the particles get more energy. 
they are able to travel to a greater distance. So, when we heat it, more kinetic energy because heat energy is getting converted into kinetic energy. And that is why those particles have traveled from kitchen to our room. Same example is of the incense stick. Incense sticks, when we put this incense stick, say in the puja room, and then after some time you can smell that fragrance everywhere in your house. So how did that happen? Again, we burn the incense stick, so there is temperature. So the particles which are coming out, they are getting more energy and they are able to travel into a greater areas or greater distance. This intermixing of particles or in other words we can say movement of particles of one matter into the other matter. This process is known as diffusion. So what exactly is diffusion? Diffusion is when particles of one matter move between the particles of other matter like in case of cooked food. So the particles which are giving us that smell, we call them aromatic particles, they have aroma. So those particles that is one matter moving between the particles of air, so that is another matter. Here also particles of those incense sticks moving into the particles of the other matter and you can do many experiments like this. One experiment can be you can take a glass say half full with water and then try to pour ink from one side without disturbing the water from one side of the glass try to pour that ink. For some time you will see that there is transparent water on one side and ink on the other side. But after a couple of hours, you find that the complete water is of the same color. That means the particles of ink, they have moved between the particles of water. And this is the point that particles of matter, they are continuously moving. They can move more if they have extra energy. They would move less if they have less energy. So we can have multiple examples to understand this. And the process when particles of one matter move in the particles of other matter is known as diffusion. We can also term this as intermixing of particles of two matters. Now in the next part we will talk about diffusion, how it takes place and what are those factors which would affect diffusion.